Hey everybody, welcome. This is a quick video to get a Python development environment set up. We're going to be going through Mac, Windows, and Linux and get you the tools you needed. This video is really just to have as a reference for all my other Python videos so everybody can get on the same page. So the end goal of this is to have Python installed as well as pip, Python's package installer, and have a text editor where you can develop in Python. So you might already have some of these things. I'm on Mac, so to start off, you can see I can say Python 3 dash dash version and see that I'm on Python 3.9.8. I think the newest being 3.10, but as long as you have 3 dot something, you're doing pretty good. So we'll start off getting this set up for Mac, then we will move to the next operating systems. Now when it comes to installing stuff on Mac, I like to use this tool called brew at brew.sh. It's really handy and a lot of different things are available on brew. So go ahead and copy this install script, go back to the terminal, paste. This will get you brew. You'll need to make sure to put in your password and then hit enter. All right, and it looks like it is now done. The basic way to install stuff with brew is to say brew install and then the name of whatever you want to install, in this case, Python 3. All right, that's done. Now you should be able to say Python 3 dash dash version and get some response. Keep in mind that when you're using Mac, the Python command is often referring to Python 2. So when you're running Python scripts, you will want to say Python 3, make sure you have that three on there. Now this should have also installed a useful tool pip. So you can say pip3 dash dash version and you can see we're on pip 21.3.1 for python 3.9. So this will allow you to install packages such as pip3 install requests. So whatever python package you need to install that is how you do it. Now you can also just check pip by itself so pip dash dash version but you can see that does not work. I'll show you a scenario where you might just see pip by itself in a moment. For now, I want to show you a different way to invoke pip, which is to say python3 hyphen m pip, and then install whatever you want to install. And in this situation, use pip without the three. Hit enter, and you can see that works as well. So far, we've talked about using it like so, pip3 install requests, and then also python3 hyphen m pip install requests, or whatever package you're trying to install. The other way you might see it is just pip by itself and this is usually the case when you're inside of a virtual environment so this video really isn't about virtual environments but i'll just show you this real quick so if you say something like python 3 hyphen m v e n v dot v e n v we're going to be creating a virtual environment called dot v e n v hit enter and you can activate that with dot dot v e n v bin activate and virtual environments are basically like a isolated environment to install packages. When you do this, you might now have the pip command available. And you can see now we are on pip for Python 3.9. What about Python? You can see it is also referring to Python 3.9. So when you are within an activated virtual environment, you might just be able to use pip in Python without the three at the end. If for any reason you ran into any issues with this process, then I would suggest just going to the Python website and downloading it from here using the installer. You can also get the latest version 3.10. We're now going to go through the installation process on Ubuntu. So we have a terminal open, and the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the latest packages for all the stuff we have. So sudo apt get update semicolon sudo apt get upgrade so update will get all the latest and then upgrade will install them put in your password and let that do its thing yes you want to continue there we go that just finished we should now be able to say sudo apt install python 3 hit enter there we go it says python 3 is already the newest version However, yours may install. So if you see more than this, that's okay. And you may also want to say sudo apt install 
python3 hyphen pip install that yes there we go and lastly we will say sudo apt install python3 hyphen venv for virtual environments Hit enter and yes all right fantastic at this point, you should be able to say Python 3 dash dash version. See that we're on Python 3.8 and pip 3 dash dash version for pip 20.0. And it looks like pip works as well without the three. You should be able to make a virtual environment with Python 3 hyphen M V E N V and then the name of the virtual environment such as dot V E N V. And we can look into that. So LS dot V E N V and then we'll go into bin and then activate. Oh, I guess you don't want to do that with the ls, so dot. That's how you activate your virtual environment. And there you go. You can now start your Python development, such as pip install requests. And that'll install the Python package. All right, we have a basic install on Mac, Linux, and now we're going to talk about installing it on Windows. So I'm actually going to be using Windows 11, but it should be a pretty similar process for those of you on Windows 10. For Windows, I actually suggest using the GUI installer from the Python website. So go to python.org, downloads, and then python3.10. Open this file. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install now, just this one up here, which will include pip. So install. Setup was successful. Awesome, so now let's check the terminal, make sure we can use Python. So there is the command prompt and PowerShell. We'll just go with command prompt. And you should be able to say py dash dash version. And to use pip to install packages, you will say py hyphen m pip install and then whatever package you want to install such as requests and that'll start downloading that package. You can also create a virtual environment. So to do that, you can say py hyphen m venv to create a virtual environment, and then the name of the virtual environment, such as dot venv. There we go. All right, you should be able to activate the virtual environment with dot venv backslash scripts backslash activate hit enter and you are now within that virtual environment and you should be able to install packages within this virtual environment just like we did before like so so if you want to install requests inside of that virtual environment here's how you would do that and there you go you don't have to use a virtual environment for everything. I just thought it would be good to show that process of how to activate a virtual environment on the three different operating systems. As most likely, if you're doing any larger projects, you will need to know how to do that. But just think of a virtual environment as this isolated environment for saying what packages you want to be installed for your projects. So that way you can have exactly the correct packages for your application to run properly. So now that we have Python installed on Windows, Mac, and Linux, we can now talk about Visual Studio Code. That is my text editor of choice. You might use something else, but I think Visual Studio Code is pretty dang good. So I actually did a whole video on a pretty decent Python environment setup inside of Visual Studio Code if you want to know the complete detailed setup. This video, I'm going to show you the bare basics to get Python going inside of Visual Studio Code. So I'd suggest following up with that video after this one. So that video is called Super Clean Visual Studio Code Setup, Clutter-Free Output. So if you want to get the exact same setup, then you can watch that video. But the essentials are you're going to create a new file and you can just call it whatever and end it with .py, such as hello.py. And we'll keep this pretty simple. We'll just say print hello world and run this with the play button. It shows up in the output for me. Yours might show up in the terminal like so, and you can see the output here, hello world. When it's in the terminal, you can use the up arrow key to go back to the previous command and re-execute it. You can also just say Python 3 or however you invoke Python for Windows, it'd be py, and then just the name of the file, so hello.py, and that will execute the file as well. 
Now, if none of this is working, it's just not working out, well, most likely Visual Studio Code will give you a little pop-up saying to install the appropriate extensions. But if not, you can go to the extensions here and you can find the ones that are appropriate for Python. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see. And scrolling through here, the ones I recommend are Python from Microsoft and PyLance from Microsoft. Get those both installed and you should have a much better Python experience. Now you can also see some of the other junk I have installed in here, but those are the two main ones. I also have this code runner, which is what I use to execute this inside of the output window. So run code and it shows up there. For any of these extensions, you can go in and configure them inside of extension settings. And you should be able to search in here. This will clear the previous output. and then this will run it in the terminal. Mine is unchecked, which is why it's showing up in the output here. But if you have any issues with the code runner extension, it's really not needed. The main two are just the Python and PyLance. But if you wanna know the more details on code runner, that's what I show in this video here. So check that out if you need more details. All right, cool, so we have a pretty good setup. At this point, we should be able to create a virtual environment. So you can have two different terminals open. So we'll go ahead and just show an example of that. We'll say python3 hyphen m venv dot venv, which will create that dot venv directory. I'm gonna ignore that. And we can activate it dot dot venv bin activate and then pip3 install some module such as requests and that's going to change what is in here. So expanding the lib directory, you can see we have requests as well as some other stuff installed as well. And within the virtual environment, we can use pip by itself. So pip freeze, that'll show all the packages that you have installed inside of that virtual environment. To get out of the virtual environment, you say deactivate. And now when we say pip three freeze, you can see we have a much different list. So that's a little bit on how virtual environments work. It's basically just a lens on how to view what packages you have installed, and you can switch virtual environments depending on what project you are working on. So that's a summary of how to get started with Python on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Hopefully it got you started. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, or if you ran into any issues, if you found the fix, please drop them in the comment section for everybody to be on the same page. We can have this as the... Uh, the one source of truth video for getting Python installed. It's a little complicated and the commands aren't universal across operating systems, which is a little frustrating, but I think we got it. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. But wait, before you go, I wanted to share a little something. I'm working on a Python backend bootcamp. So if you're interested in all the details with creating the backend for websites, APIs, some of that more technical stuff that could be a bit intimidating, well then this course is for you. So it's a work in progress. I'm still working on it, but if you want early access to the notes for free, I'll leave a link to them in the pinned comment below. So check that out and you can start getting ahead and start practicing your Python skills. Thank you and see you in the next video.